Let's see. Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. And today's date, it is June 18th of 2019. It's a Saturday. And it uh, looks like it's going to be stormy weather for the people here in the Midwest. This looks like Saturday. <clears throat> I guess from this looks like Sunday it will move to move, you know, moved away. But <clears throat> we're right here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, so looks like we're going to get clobbered today by perhaps some uh, severe thunderstorms. <clears throat> it looks like from this. Uh, this is what they're predicting for Saturday about 845. So this will be moving this way. This is the peak tornado season. And uh, I guess this is flooding. This is Tornado Alley here. Flood. So, I have uh, gone back to my 4K monitor, but in 1080 mode. So I've gotten, I did away with my second monitor. Really neat. I have all kinds of room here now. As I told you, I think about, I'm thinking about uh, putting an aquarium back here, so I would have to move the printer. Uh, and I'm thinking about turning this desk this way. So the aquarium would go on it that way. But, not sure. Let's check, see what's going on with the... Uh, the news here. Oh, okay. I, I saw that a little bit ago before I started this. At least seven shot at a house party near Ball State. I didn't know we had a state called Ball. Uh, okay, let's find out where Ball State is. Indiana. <clears throat> at least seven people shot at a house party near Ball State University in I've never heard of Ball State University. You don't hear about we don't I don't hear about Indiana very much, the state of Indiana. Uh, I worked as I've mentioned uh, hospital security for 30 years, different hospitals. And, uh, well, one hospital I worked at, uh, we would have, sh you know, a shooting victim would come in and there would be a mob of people with them. I can remember I was assigned to the emergency room. <clears throat> Electric doors come, you know, open, people rushing in, screaming, hollering. And uh, anyway, the, the person who was shot, I took him back uh, through the doors into the emergency room and put him in a room and nurses and everything came. But uh, the, a bunch of them, people followed me into the, you know, and the nurses and doctors were not going to go in that room. And I was telling people, okay, you know, they're screaming and hollering, you know. I'm telling them, you know, Okay, out of the room so that, you know, the medical staff can get to work here. Come on, they, we need, they need room to get in here. Come on, you know. Blah, blah, blah. And uh, one or two would, you know, were leaving. And the rest weren't just, help him, help him, and all this kind of crap. And there was a, a the, the hospital was in a black area, and this shooting actually happened like across the street at a tavern. So these people were all black. And uh, there was 
and almost all of them were young. Uh, but there was an elderly black gentleman there. And I said to him, sir, can you help me get these people out of here? And he said, then he said, you know, then he told him, okay, let's, you know, let's uh, let the medical people do their work. Let's go, you know, and they, they went out. So then I follow them out and I point them all into the, you know, the waiting room. But then there's, of course, still people out here that came in with the shooting that are still out in here and haven't gone to the waiting room and they're all around here. So I'm saying, okay, you need to go to the waiting room. Oh, I've been shot. What? Oh, okay. Check in there. And then there was the same thing, you know, several, I've been shot. And uh, what happens a lot of times, and I don't know about this situation here is, you know, gun goes off and uh, the bullet breaks apart, goes and hits, you know, some people or it hits a wall or a table or a desk and shrapnel comes, you know, so. So, God. Um, let me really quick, because I haven't done it in a while, I don't think. Let me pop up. Let me close this. I'm just going to do this for a little bit. I want to see the audio from this game maybe asking me to buy more coins Two, I wish they would uh, and I think they changed it for the worst I wish they would I don't want to bet uh, six million coins yeah, so. and every time I go to the thing then I have to put the thing down to some reasonable <laughs>
Welcome to Power Shot Jackpots. I got to come down again with the betting or I won't have any coins left here. The coins are up here at the top that I have. Mega win! Ray Rouge Amazing American Glamour I wish I could go to the casino and do this Wow Buffalo Sunrise Mammoth Mula Cabaret Rouge American Glamour Wild Gusher! Fantastic! I think the audio is pretty good with this headset and this is a headset using the 3.5 jack but what I've noticed about this headset is uh, my ears get kind of sweaty and I didn't have that problem before with the other headset the USB headset so I may try the next time I do a, a video I may be using the other headset uh, let me just look over the news here again. An ex-college athlete stops an armed man at a high school. He wrestled a suspect to the ground at 
Park Rose High School in Portland, Oregon on Friday amidst reports of a man with a firearm on the school campus. <clears throat> Police in Portland confirmed a school staff member brought the subject down A city dispatcher had listed the situation as a suicide attempt or threat with a weapon. Eyewitness said the suspect was a student at the high school, though authorities wouldn't confirm the suspect's identity. I'm sure because he's a juvenile. Uh, he brought the suspect down next to the school tennis courts. No injuries were reported. One student reported that Ryan told Ryan that the suspect had pulled out a gun but didn't point it at anybody. Uh, might have been a kid brought a gun in to show off, you know, which is not very bright nowadays. <clears throat> Whatever, but fantastic, you know. Instead of arming teachers, we just need to hire uh, ex, what, uh, professional football players or uh, whatever this guy is, ex-college, you know. It gets to be a good idea to have them have <laughs> uh, teaching certificates too, but just to advertise. I... I think that's it. I'm going to upload this. Uh, if we have some severe weather, I might try to get some pictures of it. But none of my camera. I have three, as you've seen them. You've seen, th you know, Panasonic cameras. None of them are uh, waterproof or water resistant, and so. And I love my cameras. I just don't want to get them run by water, so. I love storms and rain. Uh, when I was in high school, I was uh, I the uh, well, I was in Kansas City, Missouri, Civil Defense. Also, I have a thing called the Ground Observer Corps, and I. U.S. Air Force affiliate organization looking, watching for enemy aircraft. When the uh, U.S. Air Force did away with the Ground Observer Corps, uh, we were trained as weather observers. And we were told at the time, which I find it hard to believe, but that would have been in like 1950s, uh, late 1950s, I think. We were told that we were the first trained weather observers, but I think maybe what it was was the first trained weather observers, perhaps in the Kansas City, Missouri area or something like that. Then, of course, later on is, uh, you know, Amateur as an amateur radio operator, I was part of Skywarn, you know, uh, reporting on weather and that type of thing. Um, then I worked hospital security. Well, I worked as a welder for years and what have you. And then I was uh, hospital security, and we were trained to, to watch for the weather and uh, do our various functions. Whether you know, either go to a certain area. What it varied from hospital to hospital. Uh, that I worked um, 11 years at a small hospital southwest part of Can in Kansas City, Missouri, you know, Belton, Missouri. And so I, and I worked a midnight shift. And so, uh, so I was southwest, really on the edge of Kansas City, Missouri at this hospital and uh, when severe weather would come through 
and I was an amateur radio operator, so I had my uh, ham radio with me. In fact, I had it with me all the time. I actually had the, we were, we were authorized to communicate on the police department channel. That was really nice of them. I never, I was, there were just two of us that worked there. We were both, uh, had full-time Cass County Deputy Sheriff's Commissions. And that was nice. I never, never had to, I used it really once. I never showed it or whatever. I used that commission really once. Um, I think I talked about that once. But in 11 years, I never told anybody that I had one or uh, anything else. But also then the, it was not because of that, but the Belton Police Department gave us permission. And uh, I think, did they give us one of, no, we just had our radio, our radio, but I also had my ham radio that I could talk to them, you know, without having to use the other, because I had everything in the, you know, the Weather Bureau and the whole bit. So, uh, but uh, I was going to say something and I forgot what it, oh, but anyway, so. Uh, well, I think I mentioned this once before. Let me mention again that the only time in 11 years that I had that uh, full Cass County, oh, that was, thank God I mentioned that too. Uh, even the reserve deputy sheriffs for the county, they did not have full county commissions. They had one that was limited, or I don't know exactly what it was classified as, but it indicated that they had their police powers or whatever when the sheriff called them to be on duty or whatever, where the one that the commission that I had and the other security officer had was a full, you know, a uh, full commission. But um, the only time I ever mentioned, well, I didn't mention that. Anyway, I'll tell you. Uh, the ER, I just, I think I just came on duty, and the ER doctor uh, called, you know, had, hey, Jim, can you help us? You know, this lady, you know, of course she wasn't standing, but, you know, this lady, she brought her baby, and her baby needs to go to Children's Mercy Hospital by ambulance right away. And I've been telling the lady that she needs to, you know, we need to call an ambulance and transfer the, you know, take her and the baby to the hospital. And she's saying that she wants to go home and, and get her husband or whatever. And we've, you know, he says, I've, you know, I've told her the baby needs, you know, that we need to go right now. And uh, can you can you can you help us? So I went over and uh, told the lady, you know, hey, the you know the doctor tells me your baby really needs to go to the hospital, and I'll 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 go home. I'll take the baby and I'll go home and I'll get my husband, and then we'll take it to the hospital. And and I said, man, the baby needs to go to the hospital. And I, you know, she says, well, I want my husband, you know. And I said, well, uh, I said, I can have the police go pick your husband up, bring him here. He can go with you, you know, he can go with you to the, you know, uh, no, no, I'll go, I'll go, you know, I'll go get him and everything. And now, of course, at that point, <laughs> I was, I'm sure the police would have done it, especially if it was the time of night that, you know, there was, they weren't busy right then. I knew that. But if, I mean, I was, uh, I didn't have any right to say they would do such and such. So if, if they hadn't wanted to do it, I would have just myself left the hospital. There had been no security, you know, although in that case, the police would have to, you know, and then I would have gone and brought him back. But so anyway, no, no, you know, so I said, well, ma'am, you're not leaving me any choice. I am a uh, Cass County deputy sheriff. And the only, you know, and of course, I'm as I'm saying this, oh my God, this is, I mean, I'm really out of my environment and I knew the repercussions that I would probably could get into all kinds of, but anyway, but I wasn't bluffing. 
because if she'd have pushed me, because I didn't bluff, if she'd have pushed me, I would have gone ahead and done it. Uh, anyway, I said, you're not leaving me any options. I'm going to have to take, uh, you know, your baby into protective custody. And uh, she says, oh, no, don't do that. Cass County, you guys have already taken my other babies away, my other kids away from me. Don't do that. Okay, I'll go. So then she agreed to go. And then she left. And then I went, Whew. because, you know, <laughs> Cass County never told me I could take somebody's baby away from them. And uh, two, you know, if, if, I, if I, in the name of the county, took the baby, would, the, would Cass County have to pay for the medical, you know? I mean, it just, it was just a bad situation, but it worked out. Uh, anyway, how did I get on that subject? Do not know. Anyway, today I guess maybe I'll try to get some pictures of the storm if we get it. And, uh, oh, I think that was maybe one reason too I got into. Hang on a second. Uh, I've been actually never, <laughs> never actually seen a tornado in real life. I've come upon the results of it after a tornado came through. Uh, my wife and I, we lived in an area that years before, Ruskin Heights area of Kansas City, Missouri, we lived there in Ruskin Heights, but we lived after, the, it was quite a few years after, quite a few years after the tornado came through Ruskin Heights. And uh, at that at that point, we well, we'd had a tropical fish shop for uh, three years in that area, and then I started a patrol. Well, started a patrol service, and I patrolled Ruskin apartments and the Ruskin shopping center and things like that. But when the weather would get, when there would be, you know, in the rest of Kansas City, and when there would be, you know, uh, tornado watches or tornado tornado warnings or whatever, eh, you know, but it was interesting. Uh, too bad we didn't have, too bad they didn't have, too bad they didn't have digital cameras and YouTube or whatever because that area had a tornado and when there was severe weather warnings or the sky looks or whatever, people were out in the in the neighborhood came out. They were looking up at the sky. It made believers out of them. I've never actually seen a tornado. I have no desire to see one. Uh, I have no desire to be one of these weather people that drives around chasing, trying to get video of storms or whatever. But uh, I made quite a few, you know, not a, not a, I made some videos when I was in Florida of uh, hurricane. I was in a couple of hurricanes when we were in Florida. And uh, we were with, without power for about a week. That was hell. Um, I made some videos, but I uploaded them someplace. And then I stopped paying for the servers. Or, anyway, they disappeared some. But there's a few, I think, someplace. I think there's a couple, maybe, someplace here on YouTube. I think maybe if you go back, I have a, I did have a playlist uh, for 2005 YouTube videos. I think one or two of them might be in there. Nothing spectacular. I, but I did lose some good video uh, by so many different services. Uh, and I've tried them all out. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.